these arson fires, these intentionally set wildfires do tend to be occurring near populated areas. They are immediately high priority and they're close to, you know, uh, fire crews are immediately able to get in there, thankfully, putting these fires out. This is not at all to um, downplay the, the, the potential for these arson fires. We, we need to be extremely careful out there when the fire danger is high. Um, we've had one, one incidence in the past in May 2011 with the Slave Lake wildfire burned down a third of the city. That was a result of arson. Uh, will you acknowledge, we've been down this road before, will you acknowledge that climate change is driving this? Or why don't you mention climate change as being a major factor, according to experts, in driving well, this Well, yes, of, of course we have to be concerned about climate change. But I can also tell you, Graham, that of all of the fires so far this year, and we've had about the same as last year, all but one were human-caused. Adam Sos here for Rebel News. Folks, we know that arson happens. We have seen people arrested for mass arsons. Uh, there's even the case of an individual in Quebec who was charged with 14 cases of arson after he himself was insisting that it was the government setting these fires. We can also look at the instances of arson taking place at churches right across this country. Uh, the fact is that some fires are set by folks with bad motivations, but they certainly aren't all. And that's why we have to be careful. We have to sometimes check our confirmation biases so that we aren't assuming every single fire out there is insidious in nature. Sometimes when I see shocking video on social media purporting to show arson that leads to wildfires, I fact check them with my colleague and friend Kyle Britton, who is a severe weather journalist as well as a former wildland firefighter. His unique insights sometimes contextualize videos uh, and sometimes frankly cast an entirely new light on them that make them make sense in a way that quite frankly didn't before. So with wildfire season upon us, I was very honored to invite Kyle on so that he could share some of his insights on wildfire season. With with all of us. Well, wildfire season has begun here in Western Canada as thousands or millions have already figured out across the Canadian prairies. We've had our first whiff of smoke. Many folks thinking like, man, not again. We had such a smoky year last year. So thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. You know, the first time I actually reached out to you to ask you sort of a weather fire related question uh, was in light of sort of a video that was going live, uh, going sort of viral on social media, uh, satellite footage of sort of smoke plumes rising. Many people suggesting that that actually uh, was a result of intentional arson, but you provide some interesting insight on that. And this is part of the reason I wanted to bring you on. So for folks out there who've maybe seen that video and heard that, if you could just explain what your sort of uh, assumption or your understanding of what might have actually happened there is. Yeah, absolutely. So basically what happened that day was we had uh, a rash of lightning strikes that went through the region, through South Central Quebec there. And about, you know, in the day or two that followed that, we had hot, dry, windy weather, which is fire weather, especially during the springtime. We've got a lot of uh, fire danger through the boreal forest region through that sort of May and June. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But in general, you can really go back and look at the lightning detection data. You can look at the satellite data and you can see that those fires just rapidly popped off as a result of a rash of lightning that went through with very little rain. And then we have that hot, dry, windy weather and those fires were off to the races. But yeah, I mean, like seeing that imagery was incredible for yeah. anyone. I mean, that's happened before, but if you're not aware of what's going on out there, that is like, it looks suspicious. And I think that's one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on is footage that can seem shocking. If you have context, it can sometimes uh, go a long way to explaining it. W when this conversation sort of started in earnest this fire season was when that first round of smokes sort of hit Calgary and right away people were saying arson arson now don't make no mistake there is arson that takes place but you sort of provided an interesting rebuttal on overwinter fires frankly i'd never heard the term overwinter fire before the idea that there was a fire hiding all winter and then it came back and that's a cause for the smoke probably sounds a little bit uh, confounding for some people but if you could just explain yeah. overwinter fires yeah so the overwintering fires they've been they've been documented in the boreal forest region of canada over the years uh, basically it's a number of factors that have kind of come together the first thing right now we've got wildfire season the trees have very little in the way of moisture content in the needles there's what's called the spring dip or the spring window where basically from when the snow melts to when the, the forest starts to green up you get that fire season and, and most of our fire seasons in Alberta and adjacent boreal forest regions do tend to be in the month of May. But we also have, you know, you think about the boreal forest region, there's a really deep organic soil layer. There's peat moss, peat bogs up there. 
And that fire can really retreat into those kind of subsurface areas, especially with the drought that's ongoing on the landscape, the very hot fires that were burning through last summer. And that, those fires really pushed into the fall. They were burning very intensely. We weren't able to really get out there and put those fires out before the winter came. And then we had a warm, dry winter uh, as a result of a strong El Nino. And now your dice are loaded for the following spring. As soon as the hot, dry, windy weather returns, it's like if you're setting a fire in your backyard fire pit, you got your crumpled up uh, newspaper and you're blowing on it. That's what's happening on the atmospheric scale with the wind blowing on these hot spots. They can just resurrect like zombie fires, as they've been called in the media, and they can be off to the races. So effectively, you've got like root systems, peat moss, things like that under the ground, sort of burning up and staying burning. You can't even see. I know we've seen cases of fires burning for hundreds of years uh, for, for various reasons, but then drought drought conditions, dry conditions, those can just flare up. And, and you suggested that the, the, the first round of smoke we saw in Calgary was actually a consequence of that. The majority of the smoke that we saw came from a complex of fires in the northeastern part of British Columbia in those areas where there's that lots of like peat moss pick like thick peat and thick kind of organic soil and those fires like I say they all took off right around the same time one fire that's threatening uh, Fort Nelson that was a result of a power line impacting uh, tree branch impacting a power line in the high winds the rest of those fires actually started as a result of lightning in 2023 uh, and burned through the winter and that's what we're seeing this spring. Now, the other sort of thing I wanted to ask you about on social media before we get into the sort of root causes of some of these fires, uh, root cause being, yeah. I guess, a pun there, unintentionally right. so. But uh, sometimes we will see uh, videos erupt on social media, and then later on it turns out there's an explanation. Could you maybe talk about sometimes whether there's controlled burns or fighting fire with fire, how that footage can be sort of misinterpreted, uh, and it looks as though you see a firefighter starting a fire? Well, sure, yeah. I, I guess there are some cases where usually I think forestry doesn't film themselves starting these fires right. but it is a very well known sort of uh, wildfire management technique that's very effective in some cases so specifically fighting fire with fire imagine you've got an intensely burning forest fire you have two ways that you can address that one is through direct attack methods so fire crews on the ground or say air attack you know uh, dropping water or fire retardant near these fires but if you've got an, a raging forest fire with just fierce radiant heat, like 10, 15 story flames, you're not getting anywhere near those fires through direct attack methods. Then we're kind of relying on these indirect attack methods such as back burning or, you know, burnout operations. And, uh, you know, these are very common principles. Say you've got this fire burning toward some, some very valuable assets and you've got a lot of fuel in between those assets and the fire. Then you get another day with completely different wind conditions, say very light winds. You can actually say if you've got a control line or a highway or like a, a natural terrain feature, a lake or something like that, you can burn out that fuel between the fire and that feature so that the next time the wind starts to blow the fire toward those values at risk, there's no fuel left for it. So that's a very common way. Uh, any video that you see on the internet, it's always really important to see, you know, what's the context who shot this, why, where, yeah. and you ask those questions, you can get to the bottom of some of these. Now, getting into some of the statistics, we've seen uh, Premier Daniel Smith and a number of other officials talk about how so many of these fires are man-made, potentially even a majority. Yeah. Um, can you talk about the statistics yeah. of, of what causes these fires? Yeah, and so these statistics are publicly available on the, the Alberta Wildfire website. In fact, the Alberta government just recently updated this data. And so basically, uh, on average, about 67% of all wildfires in Alberta are human caused, about 33%, uh, so two thirds human caused, one third lightning caused. But about 80% of the area burned is, is from those lightning fires, 20% is from human caused. But when we talk about human caused, there's a lot of confusion surrounding what that really means. Right. About 82% of human caused fires are actually accidental in nature, whereas okay. about 18% are intentional. And we can break that down even further. So those uh, those fires, the, the human caused fires, typically res uh, recreational first. So like inappropriately extinguished campfires, quads through dry brush. The second is residential. Uh, the third is incendiary, which is including arson, but not limited to arson. Uh, it can also include things like fireworks, flares, exploding targets. The other two following that are gonna be um, the power line industry and then agriculture. Those are our common human caused fires. But, you know, specifically, we can talk also about kind of the statistics around arson fires in Alberta last year as well. We had 650 fires and 500 of them were human caused. So we have to make sure that when people know that when it's dry out there and we get into forest fire season, that they're being a lot more careful. So you're saying the vast majority of that 67% are accidents. And then even beyond that, when we're talking about the actual damage being done, more than 80% of it is actually lightning strike. I'm assuming that's sort of a, a result of people being nearer 
cover the fires that are being caused by people? Exactly right. So, you know, these arson fires, these intentionally set wildfires do tend to be occurring near populated areas. They are immediately high priority and they're close to, you know, uh, fire crews are immediately able to get in there, thankfully, putting these fires out. This is not at all to um, downplay the, the, the potential for these arson fires. We, we need to be extremely careful out there when the fire danger is high. Um, we've had one, one incidence in the past in May 2011 with the Slave Lake wildfire burned down a third of the city. That was a result of arson. But typically, it is not a major driver in, say, the area burned or the amount of smoke that's being generated by these fires. If we think about the actual amount of area burned from arson fires in Alberta, say, in 2023, 263 hectares. We had 2,211,900 uh, hectares burn in the whole province. So it's about one in 10,000, right. uh, the amount of area burned. But still, like I say, this can still be highly impactful. And we need to really, you know, we do have a little bit of a problem here in Alberta with arson fires. Uh, we had 93 of, of all the fires last year. 125 incendiary, 93 of those were arson. We had investigators brought in from outside of the province to help address this issue. We have the highest number of uh, spring arson fires of any jurisdiction in Canada. So this is still a bit of a problem here in the province. Well, I want to thank you for your insight. I think putting some context on the source of some of these fires is really critical, but also acknowledging that there is a bit of an arson problem that needs to be tackled. That is Kyle Britton uh, doing incredible work uh, sort of covering the weather out there. If you're interested, whether it's Aurora Borealis or massive storms, follow him at Bad Weather Kyle on X. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in. For Rebel News, I'm Adam Sos. Hey guys, if you want to support Rebel News as we tell the other side of the story and follow the facts wherever they lead us, I'm encouraging you to subscribe to Rebel News Plus. Not only will you get access to exclusive content, but you will very meaningfully be enabling us to continue this important journalistic mission that we're carrying out.